Okay, everyone, time for a new build. Um, this one's going to be pretty quick. Uh, what we're going to be going over is the new V5 Standard Edition kit. And we're just going to basically go over what we're, how we have uh, going to be putting this, this kit together. Uh, so we'll start off with, obviously, the, the kit itself. And this includes the V5 uh, Gen 2 B switch. So the heater, we've just got sort of a temperature monitor. And this is sort of how the kit will come. You will have your main main kit. You also have accessory bag, which includes your cables, uh, the Bluetooth adapter, and optional. In this case, we do have the SFK data cable. So this one is a select setup so that it can use the data port. So we're just going to do something very quick. This is not going to be detailed like our other build videos. If you're familiar with our kits, this is going to go by fairly quick. So uh, strap in and let's just sort of get the uh, uh, build process going, kind of show you how you get it, what you'll have to do, how to set it up, and then we'll just sort of go from there. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove four screws. These are M4 uh, screws that have that are countersunk, so remove all four. And we're going to take the top lid off, and it should come off fairly easily. Okay, and here's sort of how the lid is underneath. That is your connection points for the V4B switch, and also the RS45 data port uh, wire. So they're just going to kind of be like this when you get them, and basically you're going to set this aside. We're actually going to go ahead and wrap this with some spiral wrap. So we do recommend some cable management. So we're actually going to show you how we do this before going forward. Just sort of prep this so that that's the way we like to do it. But you can obviously decide to, wait to do it the way that you prefer. Okay. All right. So this sort of shows you how we wrapped everything in spiral wrap. Uh, one thing to note, we took both of these JST, red JST wires, and we're uh, install it into the same sort of spiral wrap. This is uh, your six millimeter OD spiral wrap, available in pretty much anywhere. Um, and, you know, and we sort of also did the other ones like here. And then we did the same thing for the RS-485 uh, cable. So that's just going to protect the wires and it's going to make it a little easier. So that's how we prepared ours. Uh, you'll notice the cutout's already there. And it is, it has a nice silicone protection in there. It's not waterproof, but should prevent any sort of moisture from coming in. So that sort of shows you how the lid is. And we're going to set this lid aside and I'll proceed to see what's inside the case. Okay, so with the lid removed, this is sort of what you're going to see on the V5 standard kit. Uh, you have the 150 amp BMS in here. Uh, this is not a heated version, but in our experience, 150 amps is really a great overall solution. Pretty much anything you can power from a standard 15 amp outlet, you can essentially uh, power from 150 amp uh, BMS once you uh, upconverted it through an inverter for 120 volts. So this in our opinion, works fantastic. It's got a lower idle draw. Now, we do have the RS-45, so this version is the RS-45. If you do not order it with the RS-45, let me show you the BMS that you'll be getting. So if you prefer, if you choose the option not to order it with the data port, you will not have the RS-45 port. So it's not something you can add later. So if you're not sure if you want the data port or not, we do suggest you get it with a data port because this option includes, not only includes the port on the case, but the BMS version also has that on there. So it's very important. Make sure you uh, future-proof yourself. If it's something that you may decide you want to add in the future, I recommend getting it now so that you'll have it available later. All right. So now let's get start getting uh, the disassembly ready. So you're going to unbolt all five of these screws. These are M4 screws, so just take your power screwdriver or whatever you have, preferably hand tool, and remove all these, and then set your top plate to a side. All right, with our top plate removed, we can now see the balancer plate and our cells. With the V5 Standard Edition, it comes with the cells pre-installed, unless you choose the option to where you don't need cells. In that case, you'll be provided with a few fiberglass separator sheets, and you'll have to install your cells yourself. In this demo, we're going to be using the LF280K version 3 with the SFK high amp adapter. You'll see the SFK high amp adapter. It is a nice beefy terminal with a machine surface. It does not have any anodizing on there, and it is going to be able to pull up to 500 amp burst. So more than sufficient for the 150 amp BMS. 
very good cells and anyone that's used sort of the eve terminals in ours i can assure you they all have said they much prefer the sfk cells with the terminals but i'm uh, you can obviously also get this kit with the standard eve terminals as well so whatever your preference is it is available all right next we're going to take off this balancer board and and take in order to get the balancer board off we have to take the riser plate off you've got five screws one two three four five counter select m4 screws so let's go ahead and remove them and then we'll get to bottom to the where the cells are all right now we're right there where the cells are so now where the fun begins so now that we have the cells ready we're going to prepare and install our bus install our bus bars and our terminals so before this it's extremely important that you grab your isopropyl alcohol we like 90 percent get some paper towels wipe these terminals down really well you want them spick and span completely clean and then once that's done you're going to do the same thing for your bus bars and your harness so we'll start working on that next and show you how that is all set up okay so we have taken the contents out of our accessories and our cable ziploc bag We've got our blue wire, we've got our red wire, we've got flexible bus bars, black wire, a combination harness, some uh, nylon insert steel knock nuts, and some wire guide keeps. So we're going to be using all these. What you want to do is, like I said, you want to get your paper towel and you want to get your isopropyl alcohol and clean this. You want all these clean, all these terminals clean, completely spick and span, and then we're going to begin installing them. It's going to go by quick. We explained this, how to do this in the manual. But we're basically going to just sort of show you how we have set it up and do definitely reference the manual as a guide. But once this is done, we're going to start bolting these things down. Now, you will need a hand tool. We do not recommend an impact driver for this. Just a nice, solid, insulated uh, hand tool such as this uh, wrench, a uh, ratchet wrench. And then once it's tight, around four to six Newton meters, we will then go over this with a uh, voltmeter to make sure our polarities and everything else is set up correctly okay so we'll show you how that looks like next all right step one after making sure your terminals are clean go ahead and install your bus bars this is the orientation you're going to want to install them just make sure you understand a lot of the cells coming out of uh, china have a sort of weird uh, uh, setup where the positive is actually black and the negative is actually gray or brown. So just make sure that you have the orientation done correctly. We will make sure if you get if you get the kit with us that the cells are already installed for you correctly. And you'll notice, also notice that there are fiberglass separator sheets between the cells. On the standard, there's a total of five. They've got one, two, three, four, five. So you have five fiberglass separator sheets pre-installed, and these are 1.5 millimeters thick. So they also act as a thermal barrier between cell to cell, as well as a rigid surface for the cell to rest against. And again, this is already pre-installed from you from the factory. When you get the kit, you won't need to do it. But if you are curious, that's how they are set up. All right, next, we're gonna go and start installing our harness. So this is a combination harness that includes both the active balancer wire and the BMS uh, voltage reading wires. So clean those terminals without support by alcohol and then begin in really getting this ready to install. Okay. All right, a little bit how we're installing this. <clears throat> so, you got your main lug, make strict contact with the terminal, and then you've got your black wire that sits on top, and then you snug it down with one of the lock nuts. The way that we have these wires is that the terminal right here goes directly onto that, and then it's secured with a lock nut. The other side, we put a washer and then we secure that with a lock nut. So you only need to put a washer on one side. Do not put a washer on this side. We want to get direct as close as we can contact with the bus bar or the terminal. And since it's a large terminal, it essentially acts as a washer as well. Okay, so go ahead and secure these. And I just wanted to give you an idea of the way that we'd like to do it. If you want to change it, certainly you're more than welcome to do it. But this is the method that we've been using and we've had good success. So that's what we'll be discussing in this build. All right. All right. So now we have our wire harness installed. And let's sort of see how we have set it up. All right. So we got our black wire to our final negative. That goes here. Our green wire goes to the positive of the first cell. Our yellow wire 
is this positive of the second cell. Blue lug with double white wire goes to the positive of the third cell. And then finally, the positive of the fourth cell is where we have the red wire. Notice the main lug wires are the ones that make contact directly with the terminal. These sit above. Once we have done that, we've secured all of the points with the nylon insert lock, uh, steel lock nuts. That's going to give it a secure setup. Flexible bus bars work well. You can also invert them if you prefer. Uh, that might make slight. I don't think it's going to make a difference, but if you we have asked some questions, people said, "Can I invert these?" Yes, you can invert them. They're the same way up or down. And if you have rigid bus bars, it does not really matter. But this is how we have it looked up. So far, everything's looking good. We're now going to measure the voltage using a voltmeter. Extremely important. Do not skip this step. This is the only way you're going to make sure that your cells are in the right order. If you do not, you may damage your kit. It will not be covered by us under warranty, and it will destroy your BMS. So extremely important. Do not skip this step. After we verify that, we're going to tidy up these wires using a little bit of spiral wrap to kind of tidy it up. And then we're going to go and start mounting our BMS uh, our active balancer riser board, our BMS, and start buttoning this kit up. One thing before we begin, just to let you guys know, I did unbolt this and I actually routed it underneath the uh, bus bar. It's going to make it a little easier to clean the wires up, so you may want to go ahead and do that. But again, up to you, whatever you prefer. All right. Okay, so we've done a little bit of cable management. Let's see what we've got going on. So we've added six millimeter spiral wrap on the cell uh, bms harness and we've added about roughly eight millimeter wrap on the active balancer and a little more uh, six millimeter on the bms balance wires so that's just a little bit what we have done some parts you're not going to be able to get um and the main thing is you just want to prevent chafing and other things that can happen in the wire um, again you don't even have to do this we just like doing it because taking stuff apart and all this adds a little bit of extra security to the wire so that's a little bit about how it looks like with the spiral wrap installed the next we're going to do is we're going to install this onto the bms i mean to the active balancer and then install the bms riser plate so that's going to be what we're going to do next all right so now this is the bms riser board and we flipped it around so this side actually faces towards the cell so you want to connect your active balancer balancing harness into the active balancer. And that's gonna allow you to uh, balance yourselves at a faster speed than just the BMS by itself. Now, a lot of people, this tends to bring a little bit of controversy. And we've been using these for quite a while. Even if you leave it plugged in permanently, we've had almost no problems with this. The only thing that you can say is potentially the cells may uh, go down or in, in voltage a little faster, but it's nothing out of the ordinary. However, with V5, you don't have to worry about that. You can see here, there is an activation lead connected to the active balancer now. So what we can do now is decide if we want the active balancer to run the whole time, if we want it to only run when our battery is near fully charged, around 13.3 volts or so, or we can disable it altogether and just use passive balancing. So you have the choice to decide which way you want. Now, I can tell you, initially, you probably won't need this. And unless you're running heavy, heavy loads, 100 amp plus, probably not going to need it either. But as your battery ages, we're talking about two, three years down the line, you're going to appreciate having this because this will help your battery in the long run. So think of it as social security for your cells. You may not need it now, but as your cells get older, they will need the assistance of an active balancer in order, to get, in order for you to get full use of your battery. So this is there, and V5 lets you decide lets you decide to use it the way that you see fit. Okay, awesome. All right, we have our BM uh, active balancer riser board installed, and again we've attached our four countersunk screws the same way that five countersunk screws the same way we did when we took off. We put it in here. If the if you if you see that this is sort of touching this, just press down on it. These are flexible bus bars, so they can go down. It's not a big deal and that should uh, have no effect. We routed some of the wires, and that's why we like using the spiral wrap. So it goes a little bit over here, and this is sort of the, the lead that we have that's gonna connect to the BMS. We have our activation wire here, and that's just sort of set that to the side. Our red wire is here, 
and the rest is looking pretty good looks fairly clean let's move on and install the bms plate okay we've got our bms plate mounted and this is sort of how you looked at it when we first took the kit apart except you didn't have the wires so you install the wires now You'll notice there's two temperature probes, and you can install them where you sort of like. What I've done is I've taken front, one of the front probes, put a little on these wire creeps, because you get a couple of these in your kit, and I just stuck one directly onto the cell, and I have it sort of touching the terminal of the cell, so it'll get temperature of the, the cell terminal. And the other one, I'll probably get some ambient temperature, uh, temperature of the case, and that's probably going to be fine for me. So you'll see that this one has two... Uh, points and we're going to attach them here and here and then also we're going to get our black wire and we're going to attach it here and here so you're going to use some standard phillips screw head a drive uh, to install these so you want to install that notice do not connect this leave this open you will do this at the very very end so for now just connect your wires get it ready uh, you want to clean the terminals before you attach the wires just like we do to everything else and once they're attached, then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so let's go over what we've done so far in terms of sort of buttoning everything up. So we went ahead and attached a second temperature probe here, and this sort of gives us the case ambient temperature. One of them will give the terminal temperature of the, of the cell. We attached our Bluetooth adapter over here, and this is sort of the wire that we will connect to in order to control the Bluetooth on and off for functionality. And we secured it using some double side sticky tape on the other side and just sort of attached it. Should be more than enough to keep it in place. So the next step is going to be attaching the lid and the active balancer connector over there. But uh, other than that, it's looking pretty good. And again, we're not gonna connect this until everything is done. This is the last thing that we're gonna do. But uh, yeah, let's start working on the lid and getting that ready to go. Onto the lid. You're gonna wanna get you some 300 to 400 grit sandpaper and you're gonna scuff up these. And what that's gonna do is if there's any ABS residue from the ejection molding process, you'll be able to scrape that off. Once you've done that, you'll clean it with isopropyl alcohol, and then we'll begin attaching the main battery leads. All right, so let's do that next. All right, gang, we're pretty much done. All the wires have been set up. We have done, we've used some Velcro straps to kind of tidy some of these last bit of wires up. We got all the wires connected. We have our uh, RS-485 connection here. We've attached uh, the main red to here. The lug touches the golden ring, brass ring, and then the red wire goes on top to make this connection. And the same thing for the black. The lug connect touches the actual golden brass ring. And then on top of that, we have the auxiliary black wire connected to that. And that is then bolted in place with including the M8 screws. We went ahead and uh, made sure all of our connections are secure. Finally, now we can connect that thing. You only want to connect, I'm sorry, you only want to connect the BMS wires once all the connections are in place. So now, really the only thing left to do is install your rubber gasket, which will include moisture resistance. So we're going to do that next. Once that's done, We'll be able to test the battery out, close the lid, make sure everything functions, and then sort of go from there. All right, so we've installed a rubber gasket, and we sort of see right in the middle, and you can see it's a pretty nice thick. We did have to trim a little bit off. You don't need to stretch this, but sort of keep a firm sort of thing. It can be somewhere above or somewhere in the middle. That's going to sort of be fine. And this is about the gap that you would normally have uh, if you had to use silicone sealer or something else. We find this rubber gasket works fantastic. All this, all the benefits of having a sealant and still be keeping it removable. Because our kid has a large lip, about twice the size of a typical case, this works great. All right, now that everything's into place, we're ready to seal the lid and sort of get to checking out the battery. So we'll do that next. All right, gang, we are done. And let's sort of sort of make sure we, we sort of go over the last couple of things. Uh, before closing the lid, we, we, we looked inside, made sure nothing is being pinched. You don't want to crush your wires, and you make sure, want to make sure all of your mounting points are clear. So make sure that is done. Once that is done, go ahead and bolt the, the screws on. 
we're gonna test uh you want to test the rs-485 connection if you with the included uh, usb sfk usb uh, rs-45 dsb cable so you want to make sure that is working and then we'll check out this now this is your bluetooth on or off if you turn it off you will not be able to establish a bluetooth connection it may still appear in the app but you cannot make a connection to it unless this is on so be sure to have this on in order to make connection you got your active balancer modes. Blue means active balancers running the entire time, which basically means the same thing as, as, if, as if it uh, didn't have a switch. If you press it to green, that's going to mean it's, it's in high mode, which means the balancer will only turn on when the battery is near full, around 13.25 volts or so. So this way, if you're like the guys, you're like, hey, I only want the active balancer to run when the battery is near upper voltage limits. This is the mode that you would want to be in. All right, or press it again and you'll turn it off. In that case, you'll just use the BMS balancing. Finally, we have our onboard external temperature monitor, which will monitor the internal temperature of the battery. If you want to turn it on, I'm sorry, if you want to turn it on, just press it and turn it on. The, the color of the icon tells you sort of what temperature it is. If it's blue, it's going to be real cold. If it's red, it's really warm. So this doesn't actually do any actual effect in the battery. It's just a quick way to see the internal temperature. Some of you may be saying, hey, well, you know, that doesn't seem all that useful. Well, we had a mold already, and this is the same sort of mold that we use for our uh, V5 uh, Deluxe or heated version. So the standard version, we just changed the icon to that. So that's a lot of sort of keep the same mold shape, and all the kits that we have have this sort of same thing. So we figured, hey, you know, this might little be a nice little handy feature for someone just want to wants a quick, quick glance of to see how their battery is. Okay, so we're not going to do a capacity test on this battery and stuff like that. We're actually going to be sending some of these out to third-party reviewers. Have you tell them, have them tell you uh, what sort of uh, kit it is, but I can tell you this, this is the most affordable battery kit that on the market that you can connect to a Victron system. So if you wanted to get some sort of thing communicating with the Victron system on a budget, you will not be able to beat the SFK V5 standard edition kit. Okay, so thanks. I know it was supposed to be a short video, ended up taking a little longer, but I uh, wanted to kind of give you an overview uh, to see how this all this is. And uh, hopefully you'll you like it and uh, just check back on our website it should be online in a day or two and uh, we should have the chipping. All right. Thank you. And thank you once again for choosing Sun Fun Kits.